Um, look, here's another way that I like to explain it. Um, Lisa, if I came up to you and I said, here's a brown paper bag. I've got a gift for you. Here's a brown paper bag. You'd probably be mildly excited. You'd maybe even be a little bit curious, like, oh, David, he got me a gift. I mean, there's probably something inside of it. I don't know if it's a cheeseburger. I don't know what that is, but you're probably mildly excited. Now, what if I came up to you and I gave you a Tiffany box? How much more excited would you be? She would be ecstatic. See, my job is to put people in a Tiffany box. See, a lot of you guys, you're walking around in brown paper bags. No one wants to open you up. See what I'm saying? Should be a breakthrough for some of you guys here. Could you imagine how much more excited people are to open you up if you are packaged in a Tiffany box? Did you know that Tiffany has never done a sale in the history of their company? Never? Never. Did you know that people spend money to just buy boxes? They won't even give you a box unless you buy a product. I did talk a woman one time into giving me a bag. I took a teen entrepreneur event in there and asked if we could have a bag. I think they only gave it to me because we had the kids there. And by the way, I kept the bag. I didn't give it to the kids. I kept the Tiffany bag for a little exercise. But that is absurd. Do you think Tiffany's is sitting there going, well, it'd be nice. I mean, a bag, it only costs us like seven cents a bag. What do we care? Let's give them a bag. They don't do that. They don't have a sale. They don't give you a bag. They don't do any of that because that is the perception of the value. Now, I can put a lot of you guys in a Tiffany box, but if they open you up and there's nothing inside, it's just kind of like false advertising, right? The one thing I can't give to you is success. You've got to be successful. You've got to get results. You've got to know something, okay? Otherwise, we're just misleading people, right? But people want to open that up and be excited. I think a lot of you guys in this room right now, you have a lot to offer. It, it is very valuable what is inside of you. You just got to have the packaging. Good or great? Great or life-changing? I was going for life-changing there, but, you know, it's, it's a little... Same thing. Breakthrough, life-changing? Breakthrough? Life Who would like to be wrapped in a Tiffany box? Who here leans a little more towards Cartier? It's okay. It's okay. It's a lot easier to sell a Rolex on Rodeo Drive than it is to sell a Cartier at the county fair. It's a lot easier to sell a Rolex on Rodeo Drive than it is to sell a Cartier at the county fair. See what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, line it up. See, there's an art to making your presence felt, to intrigue, to fascinate, and ultimately to stand out as key to being remembered. This comes fundamentally first in cracking the icon code. What do you do to stand out? What do you do to package yourself? What do you do to make your presence felt? Somebody in camouflage does not make their presence felt, right? You've got to learn how to make your presence felt. Okay, so what we're going to end this section with is doing some icon tests here. And uh, I'm going to pass out your guys' books. You guys are all going get to a, get a book so you can kind of follow along with me. Um, and you know what? Let me think about that for a second. You know what? I'm not going to give you the books just yet. You guys should all have something to write with, some way to write. And uh, I'm going to give you a test. It's a self-test. You guys are all going to take a self-test. Right? You're going to rate yourself. I'm going to give you a test to rate yourself with your level of influence and a test to rate yourself with your level of credibility and to rate yourself with your level of exposure. Now, it's up to you. However honest you are with yourself or where you're at, you know, it's really up to you. So, um, you know, you, you can lie to yourself. Um, but imagine if it was me grading you, or imagine it was somebody else, you know, grading you. Uh, maybe that might be a little bit easier. Now, there's one other way that you might want to think about this test, and that is, if you're kind of just sort of a local person, your business is more local than anything else, which probably isn't most of you, but if you are, you might a answer these questions in terms relative to how you are locally versus how you are nationally. Does that make sense? Okay. 
do we have a couple people we need to fill in? You guys go, okay, is this, is this, who's this person over here? Edward, is that person coming down here today? And Alex? So, um, Steve, why don't you move down over here, and we'll create, open up these two spots right here. Okay? So, the, oh, then go ahead and just stay right there then. Just go ahead and take Edward's spot. Actually, you're a good-looking guy. Why don't we put you right here? We put the good-looking people up here in the front, because they might be on camera. I'm just teasing the rest of you guys. Everyone's staring at me going, what are you trying to say? Stick with me, guys. I've done this before. I've done this before. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to ask you a qu I'm going to say a statement to you, and you're going to write down a number on how true this statement is to you. Okay? I'm going to say a statement to you, and you're going to write down how true this is. So in other words, if this statement is really true, it's going to be a 10. If it's not true at all, it's going to be a 0 or a 1. Okay? So true, the truest statement number is what? The lowest statement number is what? Or even zero, yeah. It could even just be zero. Okay? So I'll give you the very first one. The first section we're going to do is influence. If you want to write influence on the piece of paper, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, you're going to write a number next to all 10 of these statements to reflect how true it is for you. So I'll give you one statement here. You are knowledgeable in general or very specific areas of information, okay? So you are very knowledgeable in general or very specific areas of information. Are you a knowledgeable person? Do you have a certain expertise in a certain arena? Do you just have general knowledge everywhere, or do you have a ton of knowledge in one area? From 1 to 10, how would you answer that? So if you wrote, if you're Dr. Spock who wrote the book on parenting, you could write 10 on that. You with me? So everybody wrote down a number, right? This is just the first one. We got 29 more questions to go. So does everybody understand where we're at? Everybody's with me? Okay. Number two, you have a following, a group of fans, or a lot of powerful friends who you know is essential. How would you rate yourself on that? Kind of true, really true, totally true. You have Obama's number in your pocket. So you have a following, a group of fans, or a lot of powerful friends, scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most true. Number three, you have the ability to make somebody a lot of money or save somebody a lot of money. 1 to 10, you have the ability to make somebody a lot of money or save somebody a lot of money. The more money, the better. Four, you are intriguing, fascinating, or cool in some unique way. This is like the power of the peacock. This is like Will Smith, right? Will Smith, he's just intriguing. He's just fascinating. You know, the first day that Will Smith ever acted was on the first day of the set of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I mean, if you saw him act on that, you probably knew it was his first day. But, I mean, he didn't take any lessons. He didn't, I mean, he didn't, he didn't practice real lines. The first day he ever acted was on the set of that show, the very first day. Isn't that crazy? But he, he's fascinating. He's cool, right? He's just unique. He's just got this energy about him. Okay, number five. People copy you when it comes to food, dress, music, movies. Right? People copy you. Just think about it. Do they, do, do you, are you kind of a trendsetter? Scale of one to ten. Six. Are you healthy? Okay, health can be sensed by others. and has nothing to do with being skinny. Okay, are you healthy? People sense health. Are you energetic? Do you have healthy? Can you put in the hours? Right? Health has been valued forever since the dawn of time. Number seven, you have high energy, charisma, and the ability to make people laugh. You have high energy, charisma, and the ability to make people laugh. One to ten. Number eight, it's a really simple one. You have money. <laughs> Truth. I mean, money buys almost everything, and someone who has it can do a lot with it. People who have money are influential. Sorry, this just out, breaking news. People who have money can do things. I know. Scale of one to ten. Relatively speaking to your industry or whatever, you know, how do you feel about the amount of money that you have? Uh, number nine, you are good with technology. Someone who's good with technology. I mean, technology 
is really its own language nowadays. One of the things that makes young people the most influential is technology. If you look at the most successful young people, it's because they understand technology. Right? So one to ten. How good are your technology? Number ten, you are an effective communicator. You could have money, you can have health, you can have everything else, but if you can't communicate, you can't persuade, you know, you can't build relationships, it doesn't matter. So you are a good communicator. One to ten. Ten is like you're the best communicator. You're like the master communicator. You're like the Tony Robbins of communication. Okay? Add those up. What do you got? So let me tell you this. I did this in my opinion, even for like Oprah Winfrey. I think even Oprah only scores in the low 80s. So, you know, depending on your opinion, maybe someone give her nice. But the point is, no one's perfect in this. So I find that most people are like in the 30s. If you can get in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, I think you're doing pretty good. I think you're doing pretty good. Anybody want to share, share their answer? Anybody that brave? 63, okay. You feel like you're pretty easy on yourself, hard on yourself, you feel like you're pretty fair. Which, which area did you do the best and which area just did you do the worst? Don't tell me the number, just tell me the area you did the best and the area you did the worst. Okay, so best and worst, give it to me, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Good. Did this help you guys just kind of evaluate yourself? Do you like kind of seeing that? Do you see some areas you could improve? Got room for improvement? And do you see that if you did improve in those areas, you might be more influential? You might have more followers? Okay, one other person share a score. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, wait, we have to turn it on. I'm sorry. I'm just repeating it back, everything as you do, but I'll, I'll turn this on here in a second. Go ahead, give us the number. 78. 78. So what do you think was your best? What do you think was what your worst? I don't know if the batteries are dead or what. <laughs> okay. And, and people copying me was the worst. People what? Copy. Yeah, you're, you're not a trendsetter, huh? No. Sometimes you blend in a little bit, Michael. we got to get you to kind of peacock a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. All right. I like that blue shirt you got there. Okay, let's go on here to credibility. You ready? Same thing. I'm going to give you a statement. You're going to rate it. Two, you have, I'm sorry, number one, you have all the most relevant degrees and certifications to be the best at whatever it is you do. Okay, now traditional education isn't always necessary, depending on the industry, but in whatever your industry is, and some industries don't even require degrees or certifications. Maybe it's events, maybe it's maybe you got coaching, maybe you got mentoring, but whatever it is, you have all the most relevant degrees, education, coaches, support, gurus, you know, you've got that. Scale of one to ten. Number two, you have both written and video testimonials. Okay, we're talking about credibility here. You have both written and video testimonials. The more video testimonies you have, the better. The more written ones you have, the better. The better of what they say, the more you have of both, the higher your number would be. Number three, you have endorsements from successful people, celebrities, or people of authority. So a doctor might be somebody of authority. Someone that does a TV show might be somebody of authority. Uh, a celebrity, you know, might be an authority, you know. Uh, Kathy Smith, who some of you guys know uh, down there. You know, that might be an authority. Okay, so number four, you have awards that are relevant to your line of work and industry. Okay, so being acknowledged as a winner by a third-party organization is very key. So, have you won any awards? Have you been notified or celebrated or pointed out because you had an, an exceptional level of achievement in certain area? And it doesn't relate. You know, I'm not talking about in the third grade you won a pie-eating contest. 
Okay, it's kind of it's got to relate to whatever your industry is now. Okay, number five, you've been featured on TV in a relevant way. Okay, I'm not talking about you got arrested, uh, you know, for uh, breaking in someplace, or you know, there's there's a police car video of you walking in a straight line. That's not what I'm talking about here. You've been on TV in some relevant way. All right, number uh, six, you have been featured in newspapers. Okay, some kind of print media. Number seven, you've been featured on the radio. So when it comes to TV and papers and radio, it's like the bigger the paper, the higher the number. The bigger the circulation, the more relevant it was, you know, the higher you would rate yourself in those types of things, okay? Uh, number eight, have you written a book? The better the book, the better the book cover, the higher the rating you would give yourself. The more books you sold, the higher the book you, you might rate yourself. If you haven't done a book, you probably got a zero, okay? Number nine, had an article published. Okay, so you actually were published. Not someone celebrated you, but you literally wrote an article and it was published in something. Some kind of journal, some kind of magazine, some kind of newspaper. Number 10, you have proof of results from your advice, product, or services. You have proof, you have actual proof. So if you're in real estate, maybe you bought it for this and sold it for this and there was a big, prop, uh, big profit. You know, if you're health and wellness, you used to weigh this, now you weigh this. Or your client used to weigh this, now they weigh this. You know, um, uh, before and after me sometimes is just a website. They used to have this website, now they have this website. Right? I might pull out, you know, these two things, and, but I have, I have proof of the results. Is there a way for you to show proof of results? Ten. Okay, so add those up. Add those up. There's ten of those. Let's see how you, see how you did there. Getting tougher, isn't it? Getting tougher, huh? <laughs> it's humbling, isn't it? Just remember, Michelangelo, right? I'm giving you something high to aim for here. I'm giving you something high to aim for. Anybody want to share their score? Yeah. 28. I like it. That's all right. What was your, what was your best one? Okay, question number two was, you have both written and video testimonials. Yeah, you got some good testimonials. Okay, good. Okay, let's keep going here because we're running a little short on time. So this is on the exposure. Now, in the exposure, some of these questions are going to be a, a little bit similar, but it's, it's from a different angle, okay? So again, um, exposure would be not just being on TV, but you've been interviewed on TV often. So that means you're getting exposure. So one to ten, how often do you get interviewed on TV? Uh, number two, you're interviewed often on the radio. Number three, you're interviewed often in magazines and newspapers. So this is all about the frequency of the same things. Number three, how often uh, magazine newspapers. Number four, number four, you get a high percentage of business from referrals. So if you get like, like me, I get over 90% of my referrals, uh, um, my business from referrals. Okay, they're being referred to me. So like I would be like a nine or a 10 on that. Um, number five, you regularly publicly speak to groups of people. Okay, so if you're speaking to a lot of groups and they're two big rooms, um, then you can, you can give yourself a pretty high mark on that. Number six, you have a large group of people reading your emails. Okay, that should probably be more like thousands and tens of thousands versus hundreds, but you have a large group of people that are not getting your emails, but actually opening your emails and reading your emails over the course of a week or a month. Okay, uh, number seven, you have a large group of people reading your social media posts. So people are, you know, clicking like, they're sharing, you know, you're getting hundreds, you know, 100, 200 shares or 100, 200 likes plus. Okay, number eight, your websites come up under keywords and terms when searched online. One to ten on that one. Nine, um, you are asked to participate, and you do participate in expert panels. So do you get, you know, are there some pretty big panels? How big are the audiences? How big are the organizations that want you to be on those panels? Number ten, you speak to large groups through webinars and teleseminars. So another way that you have uh, groups, okay? One through one through ten on that. Add up those numbers. Again, hopefully you can see that you know if you can average these three tests in the 60s or 70s, you're doing really good. 
Most people are averaging in the 30s and 40s, you know. Anybody want to share the results with the last one for exposure? How are you doing in exposure? Huh? 32. Cynthia sends 32. But you can have Patrick as a partner. Patrick probably does a little better on that, though, don't you think? Yeah. yeah so you kind of, so you, your organization does get that. Kind of combined. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. He should, he should do his own. Anybody else want to share a number? Or I just want to explore real quick. Where, where do you think you do the best at? Where do you think you do the worst at? <coughs> Question number five was regularly publicly speak to groups of people. You do good at that. Yep. And number eight was you and your websites come up under keywords and terms. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not even necessary in a lot of cases for most of you. That's why there's 30 questions here. There's not any one question that's going to sink you, but it's kind of an average. Is this helpful? Do you guys see the power of this? You kind of take stock. You can kind of do that every three months, maybe once every year. Uh, you start drinking your own Kool-Aid. Take the test. It'll humble you. It'll take you down a little bit. You know, get you kind of thinking a little about there. But that's what these are. These icon tests, they're really designed to help you understand, would you be more influential if you could hit high on that test? Yeah, I think you would. Would you be really influential if you could really do well on that credibility test, you know? And of course, would you make more money? Would you make more money if you're more influential? Would you make more money if you're more credible? Would you make more money if you're more? How do people agree yes to all three of these? Emphatically yes, totally yes, undeniably yes, hopefully, hopefully. And by the way, I love this right here. How many people already read this? Remember, you could walk on waters and the haters would just say it's because you can't swim. <laughs> Breakthrough. Breakthrough, right? <laughs> Guys, remember, you're doing this for you and your business. Sometimes the people are like, Dave, it's like no matter what I do, it's like, it's okay. It's kind of the way it is, right? I can walk on water, yeah, but you, you can't swim. It's understandable. <laughs> it's just, it's just kind of the way that it is. Okay, so law of multiplication here. Law of multiplication. Here it is. It's the definition. Marketing and selling one message multiple ways, multiple times to multiple people. That is the law of multiplication. There are several ways to understand the law of multiplication. Several ways to understand it. Can anybody give me an example and usually I'll give you one just to kind of get you started here, but this is a really smart, advanced group. So can anybody give me one example of what I would consider a law of multiplication based off of this definition? What? Okay, so that is a book. So books are an example of law of multiplication. So if uh, Mark Victor Hansen, uh, if he said, uh, Jack Canfield, if they said, all right, um, Hey, Mark, Jack, can you tell me a little chicken soup for the soul? He'd have to tell you, then have to tell you, and have to tell you, but instead they could put it all in a book. And it's just, well, there's the book, there's the book, there's the book. He doesn't have to tell you one at a time. The book is the law of multiplication. They just have one message that's being sold multiple ways, multiple times to multiple people. So a book is an example of law of multiplication. What is another example? If the book is an example, of social media, you post it once. And thank goodness. I mean, if I had to call every single one of you every morning and to tell you what I ate for breakfast, that would just take a lot of time. Thank goodness that I can just post it on Facebook and you can now have your lives complete knowing what I ate for breakfast in the morning, right? But that is social media. So you make the post once, it's there forever. What's another way? Speaking, yeah. Instead of me speaking to one, I speak to all of you. I couldn't, it wouldn't make sense for me to come out to Salt Lake City and to speak to one person at a time. I'd have to, you know, get a group together. So I'm saying the one at once, but I'm reaching a lot of people once. What's another way? Yeah. Yeah, to have a website. Yep, a website's a way to do it. What's another way? Email, Email okay. What's another way? Okay. Me and Jay Levinson did a whole book on this, uh, Grow the Marketing, uh, Grow the Rainmakers, How to Make Your Business Rain Prophecy, Law of Multiplication. Here's what they are. Websites, books, magazines, testimonial, TV, videos, platform speaking, social media. Okay. And what is the one that everybody always forgets? What's probably the biggest law of multiplication? What is the biggest way to multiply those efforts? Telling. 
Testimonials. <laughs> Testimonials. So fans, having fans. Referrals, remember? Having other people talk about you? Don't we all want fans? Right, right now, somebody's out there saying something good about you, hopefully. Right now, someone's out there giving someone your name and number, hopefully. Right? Right now, somebody's doing those things. Testimonials and fans is huge. Right? Referral partners is huge. That is literally the law of multiplication. When you get out of one-on-one -on -one and get into one-in-many, it's a game changer. You know, Oprah had TV. She's only saying it once, but she's reaching so many. You know, how is it that if there's only 24 hours a day and seven days a week that some people are getting so much more out of it? Because they are leveraging the law of multiplication. How are you leveraging the law of multiplication? Are you using automation? Have you written books? Do you have websites? Do you have these things? Hopefully you do. You need to learn to multiply this. And no, Roger, I wasn't referring to the law of multiplication, but here is a picture of me and my family. This is me and my wife and our eight children. Uh, that is my wife right there. Sometimes people say that she kind of blends in. They think that she's one of the kids there. So me and the four boys, her and the four girls. Goes 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, and 3. In just a short while, I'll have the first kid start to turn it over, and he'll mess them all up. My 10-year-old will become 11. So now when I say all the ages, I'm going to have to he's gonna throw me off. So we just finish up the, e the even numbers here. So question for you. Why do I... Why am I showing you a picture of my family right now? <laughs> Do you mean that literally or figuratively? Okay, so why, why would I show this picture to you in a presentation? My life is busy. Okay, what else? Family's most important. There's a lot of reasons why I might show them, and so these things are true. Why else might I show a picture of my family? Huh? A what? Oh, change of state. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. There's one major, there's one major reason why I would, I would show a picture of my family. Connection, that's true, but that's not the one I'm looking for. So let me tell you what happens when you're speaking in front of people. And I think it's even happening right now a little bit as I kind of look at everyone's body language. There might be a few people. But when they look at you, what they're doing, and I'm talking to you, Nancy. You're like scowling at me. No, I'm just teasing. So um, when, when the people have been looking at you, what do we do? And I, and I do the same thing, too, and I have to catch myself. What do we do when somebody speaks to us? We judge them. We kind of deconstruct them. We want to find a chink in their armor. We, we, we want to know um, why they can do something that maybe we can't. Why? Yeah. But we really want to find, you know, well, sure, she can do that. She's really beautiful. Well, sure, he can do that. You know, you know he has a, a Harvard uh, education. Well, you know, of course he accomplished that. Uh, he's really lucky. Or sure, she, she wrote that, but, you know, she's got these connections that nobody else has. What are we doing when we say things like that? We're making ourselves feel better, right? We're rationalizing. We're making ourselves feel better about why we haven't accomplished whatever that person's accomplished. We're taking away our own success, and we're kind of making examples, right? Um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I do I turn out to catch myself, you know. So the answer to the question of why I show this to you is because I want to take away some of your excuses. For example, if you think I have more time than you do, I do not. I'm writing books. I've got a new TV show. I'm going on interviews. I've got clients. You know, I've got eight children. I'm involved in my church. I mean, I've got all these things. I don't have any more time than you do. Okay, so I want to take away that excuse. Education. I, I would stop going to school in the 11th grade, right? Right before I turned 17 years old. Uh, I got a GED. 
Later on, I did do some college at the University of Phoenix because my employer paid for it, and I learned how to customize my education. I took very specific classes. Later on, I was making pretty good money in real estate, and I found out that Harvard had a program for CEOs that made a certain amount of money and oversaw a certain amount of people. So I actually went to Harvard, and I took some classes. I took a class on uh, negotiation, and I also took a class on how to deal with difficult people in difficult situations because I knew I'd work with all of you someday. So, <laughs> but I very much customize my education, but if you think that I have this amazing education or Ivy League education or whatever, I don't have that, okay? So I do this to take away some of these excuses of like, if you think you can't do it, you can. I don't really have a lot up on you guys, right? Uh, have I decided to be focused? Yes. Have I decided to go out and customize education? Yes. Do I work a lot of hours? Yes. You know, one of my secrets to success, you ready? Here it comes. Sleep fast. There you go, just sleep fast. You gotta learn how to get out of what some people need eight hours, you gotta learn how to get out of four hours. How many people feel like they're already pretty good at sleeping fast? How many people think they could go into the Olympics for sleeping fast, or like they're that fast of a sleeper? How many people haven't slept in yet from last night? You got a few people here that stopped and even slept, okay. Uh, okay, so that's why I show this to you, is to kind of take away the excuses. That's Jordan, who's 18, who now lives in uh, New York City. That's Taylor, she's 16, learning how to drive. That's uh, Naya, she's 14. This is Sam, he's 12, and he's already about, I don't know, 5'6", which probably isn't that, I mean, he's really tall in his class, and it's not that tall for people in general, but considering I'm only about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, he's about ready to catch up me at 12 years old. Uh, that's uh, Ben, he's 10, almost 11. Tommy, who turned 8. Uh, Gabe, who is 6 and uh, Shelby, who is three. So there's the whole, whole lot of them. I just did that to kill some time when you guys were filling out your forms there. All right, so let me kind of explain something to you. And again, remember the reasons why I'm teaching all this. One, how it applies to you. But then two, imagine this, teaching it to other people. Okay, this might help y you with other people, might help other people move forward with you, take action with you, invest with you, spend money with you. So what I'm going to show you right now is for you and who else? Your potential clients. So as I teach this, imagine you teaching this to people and see if this would help you if you explain this to them, as I am now explaining it to you. This is what I call how to go from zero to hero. I didn't have a lot. At one point, I kind of chose to be homeless. I didn't have to be. I could have went home. But I was uh, living out on my own for the first time. I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to admit defeat. I camped out down by a, a river with a Jeep Wrangler with no top on it in Phoenix, Arizona. And I learned about something new. Because keep in mind, I wasn't really uh, very smart. Um, I probably, it was probably a day I skipped school uh, that they probably taught about monsoons in Arizona. Uh, I missed that day in school. And so I was camped out. Uh, uh, in my Jeep, up in my Jeep, and I was there for a couple weeks. Maybe I'll tell more of that story later on, but the important part is one day it started raining, and it started raining a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and that began some major changes in my life, but I was definitely at zero, <laughs> and I, I started doing uh, a lot of different things, and one thing led to another. I kind of had that uh, five-year overnight success, Right? Anybody else here had that overnight success that took them four, five, six, seven years? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I made a lot of money. I made millions in real estate until about 2007 when I had five offices in three states and I had about 26 properties, 26 properties, and I pretty much lost it all. And in two, the summer of 2007, I had to put it all back into storage. And um, the only thing good I could say is that I did sleep like a baby. Every hour I woke up and I cried. And um, it, was, it was tough. I did a lot of camping out that summer, and that's a fun story to tell you about another time. But the point is, I was at zero again. I was actually at less than zero, because now I owe a bunch of people a ton of money. Anybody else here owe a bunch of people money before? Know what that feels like? You can relate to that a little bit? Um, so every time, this is what I did, and people would say, David, how did you do it? So I created a visual aid. Now, there's the presentation, there's the presentation, under the presentation. What I hope you're picking up is experts make complex things simple. We take what's in our head and we get them on paper or we get them on a computer screen. So what I did is I thought that I thought and I and I thought and I thought and I said, okay, well I have gone from zero to hero twice and hope to never go back to zero again. And uh, well how did I do that? Well this is how I did it. 
And then I thought, okay, well, is this how other people do it? Yeah, that's how they did it too. So that's how I created this. See, the first section is learning. The second section is earning. And the so third section is investing. So in the beginning, I'm developing talents. I'm learning to improve my skills. I'm learning how to provide solutions to people. As I do that and do that well, I can learn how to earn money for those solutions that I am coming up with and for those skills that I have and those talents I have. I can earn money. I might even earn credit. I could even earn venture capital. I should definitely earn more than I owe. I definitely should save some. I should have saved more money uh, the first couple times around. I definitely do more of that now. But then you want to invest in yourself and you want to invest in your business. And you just kind of want to just repeat the process. So it's learning, earning, investing. Here's another way to look at it. What's this symbol here? What does that mean? Keeps going and going and going, right? Are you guys seeing that it could be valuable for you to show other people this as well, your potential clients? Is this helping you? Hopefully it should be. I don't care whether you're Donald Trump, Richard Branson, Mark Cuban, whatever. They all follow this. They earn money. They earn credit. They earn venture capital. They earn more than they owe. Very important. How do you earn more than you owe? You keep your expenses really low. That's how we earn more than we owe. We should save as much money as we can. Then we invest in ourselves. We invest in our business. We do it all very strategically so that we can earn more money, earn more credit, earn more venture capital. We always want to be earning more than we owe, so we got to keep our expenses low. We save. We invest in ourselves. We invest in our business. We do it all very strategically. And it repeats again. Okay? I don't care who you are, where you're at, you're doing this. Even the most successful people out there. I don't care if you're Warren Buffett. He's doing this. I guarantee you he's doing this. Anybody disagree that Warren Buffett is doing this? This is what he's doing. Everybody's doing it. And you can do it at whatever level you're at. We're all playing at different levels. Right? There's a town called Brokeville. Sometimes we like to revisit Brokeville. Right? We, we take a bus tour out there. Guess what? There's another bus coming. You don't have to stay there. That shouldn't be a breakthrough for anybody here. Okay? So this is how you do it. Right? Now, there's two different ways to show you this. Is it nice to have two different ways? Some people might go this way more. Some people might go this way more. This is making complex things simple. Right? This is making complex things simple. I have, one of the things that I did for you guys is I created some things like this, and you'll get things like this in your workbook too, where you can take things like this and make your own, right? So what are things you might put in these squares? These are just little exercises for how you might make things complicated. You might just put a line through learning, earning, and investing, right? Maybe yours is education and earning. Maybe yours is earning and education and then investing, you know, whatever it is. But to start to think like this and to use visuals is hugely important because this is what experts do. I also brought it through some of these others. Some of you guys might like this. Some of you guys might not. We're going to do a little bit of this later. But, you know, what's this? Venn diagram. How many people see me use Venn diagrams? So what are three things in your business that when you line them all up, you hit the sweet spot? You know, we're going to hand some of these out. Usually this one here is just two. When it overlaps, what's the sweet spot? This is a great exercise. I know, I know it's, you look at this, I know some of you guys are, you, you're so successful, you make so much money. This might be beneath some of you guys here. But just to understand this and do this is really good. It's really good. These visual aids are worth a lot. Yes, Michael. Breakthrough? Yeah. Yeah, so find these things, create these kinds of things. These kind of, I'm going to tell you more about visual aids later. I'm going to tell you more about you know, making complex things simple. But I brought some blank ones just so that we could um, go through them. It's a really good exercise for you to, to go through. It's going to be a part of a, another section where I, we talk about copywriting and things like that. So here's kind of my dictionary. Brand. The sum total of all the experiences a person has with any person, place, or thing. The sum total of all the experiences. So if I said Vegas, and I said write down on a piece of paper what Vegas is to you, what Vegas is to you, what Vegas is to you, or if I said tell me about the, the experiences of Vegas to you, the experience, there will be a common theme throughout all of them. 
the sum total of all those experiences, that common thread of all your experiences, that is Vegas's brand. And yes, a place can have a brand. China has a brand. If I say China to you, what comes to mind? When you find that a lot of you probably think a lot of the same things. Right? If I said Facebook to you, you'd probably say a lot of the same things. If I said Taylor Swift, you might say a lot of the same things. Right? If I said the Beatles, a lot of you guys might say the same things. Because a brand is the sum total of all those experiences. So now here's the question for you. What experiences are you giving people about what you do? When they call you on the phone, is it a good experience? When they go to your website, is it a good experience? When they hear you speak, is it a good experience? When they open up your email and read your email, are they having a good experience? Because you're always training them, whether you like it or not. You're training them that, oh, every time I open up the email, it's garbage. Guess what? I'm not going to open the email anymore. You've trained me well. I have learned, right? I have learned that there's no reward for opening your email. So if you always give them garbage emails, that's their experience. If somebody gives bad customer service a lot, then what becomes the brand? A brand of bad customer service, right? You could even have 80% of the people happy, but think, if you had 20% of them mad, that's not good. You could have 5% mad and upset, and that wouldn't be good for your brand, right? So it's the sum total of all the experiences. So think about your brand. What is your brand? What do you want to create? When they walk into your office, what experience do they have? I heard Cynthia Porter speaking to a group of chiropractors, and, and some of these chiropractors, they want to cut corners and save money, whatever, and Cynthia is up there saying to them, guys, paint your freaking walls. Right? Those things make a difference. Uh, Nordstrom's, what do they do when you're in there? It's not uncommon for some of these nicer stores for them to give you a glass of wine. I don't drink wine. I don't care about wine. But the effort of them going the extra mile to create a what? Experience. That's huge. We're going to talk a little bit more about the experience economy later, but think about your brand. So when we're helping people create brands, when we're helping people create an iconic brand, this is what we do. We have what we call the five C's of launching. First, what is your concept? What makes you unique? What makes you special? What makes you different from everyone else? What's your unique selling proposition? Are you all about speed? Are you all about quality? Are you all about price? You can have any two you want. How many can you have? Two. Might even be better if you only have one. You can't be all three. You can't do it. Talk about what is it? Speed, quality, or price? Price. price. I have a few college students that might say quality, but you know, kind of depends on the on your audience sup supposedly, right? So think about that. You know, Mercedes, Ferrari. You know, probably selling more quality. Okay. So think about the price. Now ask yourself, what do you want to be? Do you want to be the top of real estate? Right? You want to be the Ferrari of uh, the chiropractor practice? What do you want to be? Now, that may sound like a little question. Oh, David, you're trying to get me to be quality. No, I'm not. You can do whatever you want. There's lots of different ways to make money. If you want to make a million dollars over a year, you can, sell, you can work all year just to sell one thing for a million dollars. Or you can work all year to sell a million people something for one dollar. I don't care. I'm not saying you have to do that, but you need to know what that is. If you're all over the board and you don't know how you're going to make that million dollars, you know what your brand is, it's going to be very hard. And if you're going to sell them for very cheap, you have to sell a lot of them. So your business model better be set up to sell a lot of something. If you have to sell a lot of something, you've got to work on quantity, not necessarily on quality. Now, yes, you guys might know some of this, but I hope I'm framing it in a way for you certified coaches do you see how these are conversations for you to have with the people you're working with? If you're trying to help somebody with their business, do you see how having this conversation can help you? The zero to hero conversation can help you? All these conversations should help you in more ways than one. You're the you're captain of the breakthroughs today here. I like it. Now we got some other breakthroughs in there. How many people feel like they've had at least one breakthrough today? How many people feel like they've had 10 breakthroughs but have never said one once? How many people just never raise their hand no matter knowing? No, I'm joking. <laughs> That's Todd and Nancy right there in the back. Okay. Yeah. It's good. It's good. I'm a, I don't judge you. It's okay. 
But everybody's had breakthroughs. Everybody raise their hand. That's good. That's the conception. Next is collection. Now we got to go in collecting mode. We got to collect pictures. We got to collect videos. We got to collect content. We got to collect case studies. We got to collect information. We got to collect. We got to collect. We got to collect. Only after we collect, now can we go create. Now we can create a website. Now we can create a flyer. Now we can create a presentation. Now we can create a book. Now we can create an event. Now we can create an exhibit. Okay? Now we can create. Now that we've actually created something, now we can campaign. Now we can go tell the world about it. Hey, look at my website. Hey, look at my book. Hey, look at my product. Now we can go do PR. Now we can go do advertising. Now we can use affiliates. Now we can do joint ventures. Okay? Now we can go campaign. Step five, connection. Do people like what you created? What are the surveys? What's the feedback? Did you under-promise? Did you over-deliver? Do you need to tweak? Do you need to improve? What do you need to do? Are you tracking? Measuring is marketing. Marketing is measuring. If you're marketing, you need to be doing what? Measuring. Marketing, you need to be measuring. One more time. Marketing is? Okay, there we go. I know. I hate it when people do that to me, too. But I just got to make sure here. So this is the five C's of launching. So one, can it be recreated in a predictable way? Uh, I love it when people have some kind of fluke, and they try to build a whole business model around it. Dude, I got so lucky, and now we're going to turn it into a business. Well, wait, hang on a second. <laughs> if you got lucky, that's probably not a business. We're looking for a predictable way to recreate and duplicate success. Two, is the perception that you're, it is easy? Whatever it is you're doing, do you, is your business, your product, is it easy? That could help you. Are there steps that it could increase the odds of your success? Yeah, a lot of business practices. Can you show others how to go from zero to hero? Can you show others how to get results? Absolutely. This is huge for all you guys. Now, I could just tell people, hey, let's work on a project. But again, do you see how I took what's in my head and I put it on paper? So now a client wants to work with me and I can tell them, okay, we're in the first step. Uh, first part, conception. So Nancy Singleton and Todd are going to come out to uh, California next week and we'll be doing their strategy session. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the concept of their business. This could go really fast. They've been in business for a long time. They're very good marketers. But still, we're going to review this. It might take five minutes or it might take 50 minutes, but we're going to review this. Next thing we're doing, we're going to start collecting. Hey, what kind of pictures do you guys have of you speaking in front of people and audiences? Oh, I've got that. Hey, what kind of pictures do you have with these celebrities you've worked with, like, you know, uh, Kathy Smith? Oh, wow, I've got that. Great. How many videos do you have of, okay, I got that. We're going to gather all that. We're going to shoot some pictures of them. Pictures are huge. I want to make memes. I want to make ads. I need to put it up on websites. So we always want to shoot pictures. So we're going to shoot pictures of them. That's all collecting. By the time they leave, I know what we're going to create. We might go create a book cover. We're going to go create a website. Right? How many people have already done a strategy session with me? Yeah. How many people have a book cover from that strategy session? Okay. So, and some of you guys already have websites. So then we, then we create. Now, once I create it, now I can go tell the world about it. Right? Now I can go tell the world about it. Helpful? Breakthroughs? compartmentalizes it, puts it in a box. So this is the law of preparation. Uh, my favorite definition of success is when preparation meets opportunity. You got to prepare before pursuing. Okay, so this is, I, I love Abraham Lincoln. I use him in a lot of my books. I've got a lot of great pictures of him. Um, over the years, I've just, I've really become uh, a fan of, of him and his life and his example. And one of my favorite quotes of his is, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax. Right? Preparation is huge, huge, huge. So here's what most people think out there. Most people think talent plus, six plus luck equals success. You're pretty talented. I don't have that talent. I wish I was as talented as you. Or, oh, you're pretty lucky. I'm not lucky. I can't be successful for you, right? That's a limiting belief. We're, we're making excuses for ourselves. But what most successful people know is preparation plus opportunity equals success. That's really what it is. How many people have too many opportunities coming at them and they're not prepared? How many people have opportunities that they just can't act on? They don't have the money. They don't have the time. They don't have the team. Is that frustrating? I get frustrated by that. I just got a TV show. And I just had the people call me a couple days ago, and they said, David, we're really kind of surprised. You know, we gave you a TV show, you know, almost two months ago, and you've yet to film one episode. Do you even want the TV show? <laughs> I mean, surely you want to have the show, right? I am so overwhelmed. I've been traveling so much 
but I haven't even been able to take advantage of this opportunity. That's a huge opportunity. It's taken me a while to get prepared for it. I go home on Sunday, and over the last next couple of weeks, I'll be uh, in town, and I hope to get all these. No, no, switch that. I will be filming, not hope, I will be filming episodes so we can get that TV show done, right? But you can have huge opportunities come at you, and if you're not prepared, it's not going to work. You can also be prepared, but if you can't find the opportunities, it's no good. Some people need to learn how to recognize opportunities. How many people are unafraid to admit that maybe they don't always recognize the best opportunities, or they're spending time on the wrong opportunities, right? Okay, so here's what really super successful people know. Preparation squared plus opportunity squared divided out by wisdom minus the ego equals super success, which means you got to be super prepared. you gotta have, you got to be on the lookout for amazing, amazing opportunities. And you have to have the wisdom, the wisdom to know what you should prepare for because you only have so much time. And you have to have the wisdom to know what opportunities you should go after. Then you got to let your ego get out of the way and you can have super success. Some people, they have all kinds of preparation, they have all kinds of opportunity, but their ego just, just cannot get them to where they need to go. 